I'm Pox. I'm um, Rankable. You're watching a camera. You're watching the two smart guys. <laughs> <laughs> the camera was pretty exciting. Well, it was mostly just the strap. <laughs> oh, it's a tease. It's like, um, I don't even know what camera that was. Okay, there it is. We're talking about this bad boy. This is the T2i, and you can pick one of these up used probably fairly cheap nowadays, I'd imagine, because there's better cameras. <laughs> Uh, yes, but the lovely thing with this is that you can always load it with other firmware. Right, right. So there's this thing called the Magic Lantern. It's got this <laughs> and a bottle, and it's, it's awesome. <laughs> you just make it sound like, like the Green Lantern when you say it like that. <laughs> Um, no, but seriously, it's not, it's, okay, so if you watch like our episodes on PSP hacking and stuff, you have custom firmwares. This is not a custom firmware, this is a firmware that goes on top of the existing firmware. It's like a little overlay. I thought it wiped out the original one. No. And it loaded itself on there. No, it doesn't. Oh. Um. It's, um, it leaves, it, it just, it writes into ROM. When you boot up the camera, it's, it copies as read-only memory, so it never actually flashes the firmware. So it's not a camera. permanent hack, it's basically just taking what's loaded onto your, you know, memory card and putting it into the camera's memory. Correct, but it stays uh, on a, a, in the boot sector of the SD card, so every time you turn on the camera with that card in it, it boots up in it. Uh, so if you don't want it to, you can either, you know, t um, go into the menu and tell it to remove it from the card or just use a different card. <laughs> So, you, so that's what a lot of people do is they'll have so a it's, card. So it's really, it's it's really non-destructive. Right. Oh, so anyways, awesome. the benefits of it. Why would you want to do this? Because we can? Cause we can. <laughs> because it lets you do really cool things, like shoot HDR video. HDR. Yeah, high dynamic range. So you remember, you, um, you've seen like high dynamic range photography? Yeah. Well, it lets you do that for bracketing for still photos. So you can shoot low exposure, high exposure, and then in some mysterious software on the PC side or Mac side, you can merge them and get this like sunset that still you can see the grass blades and stuff. It's not mysterious. You can do it in Photoshop too, I think. Yeah. Okay. You, you can do it in just about anything. I'm just saying it's not done in the camera. Right. The camera produces two images. You merge them later some other post process. Um, apparently, you can do it with video. And the way it does it with video is every other frame. <laughs> So, do you have to change your frame rate at all? Um, I would, or you're gonna you're you're gonna end up with <laughs> half the frame rate. So, so is it what it's doing it with the video? Is it bracketing 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 it in two frames, or is it doing it in three frames like regular HDR? Just two. Just two. Yeah. So you might want to choose something like sixty frames per second. Yeah. So it, you can do that in, like the T2i does sixty frames, seven twenty p. So you can shoot twenty seven p HDR and still end up with a thirty. P video. Have you tried this yet? I did. I got video, um, and I'll put it in this video of what it, the result is once I figure out how to process it. <laughs> and what's your opinion of that? Um, it looks cool, maybe? <laughs> you know what else looks cool? 3D. So I have to ask you, do you think this has I... a cinematic application? Yes, I think there are certain things where it would make, where it would be um, interesting or it'd have a neat look or, you know, like, kind of like uh, music videos and stuff. I don't think it's good for everyday shooting. You're not going to shoot your son's birthday party with HDR. Although, you would be able to see the cake, the candles, and the kid's face. <laughs> what about for a, what was your, what was, what was it that you were shooting? Oh, I was just, the studio, me. <laughs> oh, you should try, take it outside during a sunny day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like I was saying, I want to try a sunset. 
or something, you know? Oh, like, yeah. Well, something that would require, a like, a polarized filter or something like that in order to get a good picture. Yeah, yeah. Something where, you know, you, you have the dynamic range where you just normally wouldn't be able to see both things at once. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. I'll post it in this video. Um, but I want to do a tutorial. Um, so here's my little tutorial on installing uh, the Magic Lantern firmware on a Canon camera. All right, the first step is you need to have the latest firmware on your T2i. If you don't already have it, pop in your SD card on your computer, go to Canon's website, download the firmware, put it on the root of the memory card, pop it into your T2i, go to the menu, and browse over to the firmware version, and update it. Pretty straightforward. Just hit OK. Uh, at the time of this recording, 1.09 is the latest one that is compatible with Magic Lantern. Then do a low-level format on your card, pop it back into your computer, and then copy over the entire contents of the Magic Lantern archive, which you can download in our show notes. And then you do the exact same thing again. You go back over to the firmware version and you do an update. This time, you'll get a cool little thing that displays on the screen that says success. And that will install the Magic Lantern on your T2i. Take out the battery, pop it back in, turn your camera back on, make sure it's in video mode. Give it a second and it should get a live view and you'll see cool meters. <laughs> now if you hit the trash can button, it'll bring up the special Magic Lantern menu system. And once you're inside of there, this is where you can play with all the really cool settings that you didn't have before, such as your audio. You can change the gain, the auto gain you can turn off. Um, you can select the input, whether or not it's a powered mic, uh, the volume output, and USB monitoring, so you can actually monitor your audio with the adapter that comes with the camera. In live view, there's tons of cool things like zebra stripes, so you can see your peaking, see you know levels that are overexposed. Magic Zoom is awesome. It lets you give a little um, round circle that zooms in so you can check your focus better. Uh, exposure, uh, just amazing things that you can do that were much harder to do with the regular firmware. Here, we're changing the ISO up like a little insanely high. <laughs> just, be, just because we can. I had the shutter up just a little bit crazy high at the moment. We'll kick it down to something you can actually see. That's where you can set your white balance, picture styles, all kinds of fun stuff. Now movie mode, this is where things get interesting. You can change the bit rate of the video recorded. So you can more than double it. You can actually triple it so that you get a much higher quality video, less compression. Keep in mind you have to have a very fast compact flash card, or in this case a secure digital card to do this. And then here's what we were showing earlier. Uh, you can do really cool things like you can actually change the frames per second. Uh, you can lower it like incredibly low <laughs> if you wanted to, which gives you really l great low light capabilities, even though the frame rate just drops to heck. And this can be useful if you're trying to speed, do like speed photography, time lapse. And uh, HDR video, this is where you can actually select, select uh, the two different ISO settings, and you'll see it actually flicker between the two of them so you can kind of adjust it and make sure when you're shooting that the darkest parts of the image are dark, and then on the other one, the lightest parts are the lightest. So you, you just make sure you have the highest range possible, and it's still something usable in each image. And then for still photography, you can set up the bracketing for um, on three different levels. Lots of stuff to help you with checking your focus. Just in general, a whole bunch of hacks. We're not going to go over all of them, but just amazing stuff that you can't normally do with the cameras. I'm still playing with a lot of these settings. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
<laughs> and it's done. And it's done. Yay. Yeah, so that's that's pretty easy. Um, just want to make sure that if anything ever goes wrong, you take out the just battery. Hard. So Magic Lantern is not just for DSLRs. It's also for point and shoots as well. Right. Um, um, and they have DSLR people ex- like the DSLR. <laughs> yeah, th- there's a pretty extensive list of what cameras out there Magic Lantern support, and we'll provide that link somewhere in the show afterwards. Uh, Maybe. Yeah. In the show notes, there'll be links to where you can get the yeah, camera and the all the cameras notes. that are supported. Um, oh, a couple other main features I should have put these at the beginning of the show is for shooting video, you can check your focus. It can give you a second window inside of your LCD window that's zoomed in a lot. So you could have it. Like a picture in a picture yeah, sort of thing? It's like a picture in picture, but zoomed in so you can check your focus. Oh, thank God. Which, when you're doing like really tight up the field, 1080p, <laughs> it's really hard to get your focus. And the T2i actually does this way better than the 5D, which is weird. What the T2i does yeah. autofocus? Because the T2i probably has more autofocus. I think it has a, more, a better processor. <laughs> it's a newer camera by like a couple years, so yeah. Sure. Which is interesting, or at least the the video process the real-time display monitoring or whatever the hell it is, is newer. The 5D takes much faster pictures, but it's a, it's a different, I don't know. Image processor. Yeah, it's a different something, thing. Something, something. Anyways, um, what was I getting at with this whole thing? It's fun, Features. try it out. Um, I'm gonna do some cool tests with it, and I'll, like you have seen somewhere in this video before this part of the conversation. <laughs> Uh. (laughs) anyways if you like our shows please subscribe to the feed or um, here on YouTube on the corner somewhere around here and you can follow us on Twitter I'm at Walking Crow there's a button somewhere for something (laughs) just click it yeah please it helps (laughs) I promise (laughs) And are you going to watch craziness on uh, Wednesday nights, 10.30, no, 9.30, 8.30, sometime around there we usually do the show. Depending on everybody's schedule, sometimes Couch Guy and I work late or we have other commitments that we have to meet. Yeah, right now uh, it's currently 8.30, but we might be moving that back a little bit. <laughs> Fox seems, no matter what, to be able to broadcast in a car, in a plane, in a train. It's true. Uh, yeah, I ha- Train I have not done yet. I, You've I done the plane? You broadcast in the plane. Yeah. I want to see a train next. Okay. We'll, we'll go for the train <laughs> next. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. See you next week. Laters. This has been the Two Smart Guys Reduction. <laughs>